All right, another motor video. Uh, this is also a tiny little motor. You can see my finger here. Uh, so it is a tiny little motor. It's a, it's a geared motor. Let me uh, turn it off here so it's not making noise. But uh, it is a cute little geared motor. There's the part number. Yeah, I think you can find these all over eBay too. Uh, I think that's where I got mine, but it's got a whole bunch of gears. It's not planetary, but it's got a whole bunch of gears in here. And it runs off of five volts just fine. That's what I have it running here now. And it looks like it's about uh, 60 RPM. Anyway, so today's video is about um, measuring uh, currents. And we will use the motor as something that I want to measure. Okay, so I have, uh, I have it going and I want to measure how many uh, how many milliamps does it take to run this motor so I can choose the correct transistors, you know, to turn it on and off, what type of eight bridge or whatever I want to have. Um, so yeah, let's see if we can't measure this motor. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna try to standardize. I'm gonna try to use the green meter always for current and the red meter is always for voltage. So I've got my green meter out. And uh, so I have it set up uh, uh, milliamps. We use these two connections here. I have it set up for milliamps. And so I'll break one of the connections on the motor and we will put in the ammeter in series. And uh, there we go. So uh, we're measuring about 60, 59, 59 milliamps. So is that the right number? Oh, it must be, I oh, did it right. Um, if you're musically inclined though, you would have picked up that the motor is making a different sound. It's a different note. It's lower in tone, okay? So let me demonstrate that to you. You hear that? That's high frequency. That's when it's hooked up directly. So we have no, we've taken the meter out of the loop and now it's gone low. We could also do it over here. We could uh, short the meter out. We can say, oh, okay, we're gonna short the meter out and it went high. So what's going on? Um, that's annoying. Um, it takes burden voltage to measure the current. You're gonna pass the current through a resistor and then you're gonna measure that voltage. And if you wanna measure fine, little small little currents, you need kind of a large resistor. And it's gonna get in the way of making, is it gonna get in the way of making the measurement. So what can we do? How can we get rid of that? Um, how can we get rid of that voltage? Or what is that voltage? How much, how much voltage are we losing by, by doing it this way? All right, so let's get out a, let's get out a second meter. This will be our, this will be our volts meter, right? And so we will measure the uh, voltage across our current measurement. And I'm in the way of the meter lighting. Okay, so we're dropping about 0.6 volts um, in order to do that measurement. So that you can see that these, these voltages kind of agree, right? It's taking this voltage and, and displaying it as current so that that resistor is set so that it's, 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 it's doing this. Um, and there's some calibration and stuff in, in, in effect, but basically it has to use this voltage in order to get that current reading. And that is the, uh, the burden voltage, right? Now, if we do something uh, that's a little bit uh, different range, we can use a smaller and smaller uh, resistor and we won't drop as many volts. So there's a 20 amp uh, range on these meters. So let's go to the 20 amp range, okay? And we don't need this meter anymore. We'll go to the 20 amp range. And now you use these two, you, you go in the common, you go to the 20 amp. So now we need to use a different lead here. We'll use, we use this lead here and we want to go here. You hear it? We're back up again. The, uh, we're not dropping any voltage here. And I guess I should have left these in here that you want to measure this voltage, don't you? So what is the voltage drop now? First of all, we're measuring a, a maybe a little less current, point, uh, 0.59 uh, or uh, 59 milliamps. So let's measure the voltage across across this now. 
Okay, there we go. So our burden voltage now is only 0.02 volts, so very little volts. Um, now we're not getting very good accuracy. Um, you know, we had better accuracy on the other range, but we're dropping less. So let's turn this off. So you can see that um, you have to choose the range uh, and, and, be, and be weary of you dropping voltage when you actually do these current, these current measurements. So um, yeah, something to be worried about. Okay, so how can we measure the current at the right voltage here? Uh, is there, is there no, another way to do that? Um, well, you could just turn up the power supply to overcome that extra 0.6 volts or whatever it is. You could measure it and then you could monitor the voltage across the motor and then just turn the turn your voltage up until the motor was seeing uh, was seeing five volts and then measure it that way. But sometimes you don't have that ability to change the voltage and you want to measure things. So that's why I wanted to point out the video. If I wanted to characterize the motor, then like I said, you could you could just use your power supply and overcome that burden voltage. Uh, you could also use a couple other tools. So if you're lucky enough to have a nice power meter like this HP one, uh, this one's actually Agilent. Uh, this is an Agilent E3631A, and uh, it's sort of the poor man's uh, source measurement unit. It, it, it sources, it's a power meter, but it also can measure. It has a fairly accurate uh, uh, ammeter in it, you know, 0.00. It's, so it's, it's three digits of, of, uh, of, of, of amps. So if we take our, um, if we take our, our motor and we put it on, I have it programmed to five volts. And uh, so it's, uh, it's showing about maybe 68. Now, if we take off that three, I don't know why it has a three there. Um, so if we, uh, this, this thing might need calibrating, but uh, let's say that it, the, the three is extra. So we're gonna subtract three from whatever reading we get. And so we're measuring about uh, 60, 68, 67, let's say it's 67, we, we subtract three, that's 64 milliamps, right? And so this is saying 64 milliamps. Uh, well, that's pretty close to, to uh, I think, the real thing. Now, the most accurate way to do it is if you're extremely lucky and you have a source measurement unit, I have my Keithley uh, 2400 here set to five volts and uh, uh, I'm measuring about 65 milliamps. Um, with a five volt source as well. So this is gonna be super, super accurate. That's dropping a bit, it's, that motor is heating up. So uh, 60, 64. So um, yeah, so really, 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 really accurate way of characterizing things with a, with a source uh, 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 a, a source meter. If you don't have a source meter, then a lot of times these, uh, these nice uh, power supplies can act as a pretty good source meter. And uh, if not, then you just have to compensate for it.